when I record and then edit the narration I do for these videos, I make use of a couple of built-in tools in the waveform editor and renoise that are actually pretty easy to overlook. So let's see how they're used. When you record narration, it's the human voice and certain clicks are going to come through. It's just normal vocal noise. But particularly egregious examples, I'll go in, edit the whole thing, listening for you know bad clicks, and then edit them out. I'll just listen to this. You can hear an example. Until the end of the... Right there. Until the end of... Okay, so where is it? Well, zoom in. And because I've been doing this for a long time, I know exactly what to look for. And it's this. You can see it by the jagged waveform. Now, you want to grab it at the zero crossing here. It depends on what the waveform is. Sometimes you'll want to grab the top of a waveform down to the bottom. And the point is not to alter what the waveform is by using the smooth tool. Uh, because this is human voice, your brain is tuned for it. And if you introduce something unnatural, then that's going to stick out even more than the click will. So grab the zero crossings and then simply just smooth. That's it. Till the end of the current. Solved instantly. Now, I actually have some send tracks here which deal with similar things. Uh, the bass goes to anti plosive, which is just a compressor. And then the high end will go to anti click, which has a signal follower and a gate. This doesn't always pick up everything, it's not perfectly tuned. And I do need to make some adjustments here because the levels should be automatically adjusted according to any changes that I would make here to the gainer. You can see I've turned it off. Usually it's on depending on what the input volume level is and that will depend on how loud the actual full recording is. And so what I would want in future is if I'm raising or lowering it, I would want the anti-click levels to also adjust along with that. It would happen automatically. So the other thing that I can do, and I don't do this very often nowadays, just because I've worked out the process of recording anything, got it down to a fine T, and what would occasionally happen is there would be hardware noise. I would rustle paper that I'm reading, uh, knock into the microphone, and there would be no way to actually re-record just the circumstances wouldn't allow it. So what you could do there is come in and just cut out the chunk. Kind of like that. But sometimes you wouldn't be able to do it at the zero crossing. You would come in and do something like this. And you'd be left with a very ugly edge. So when you listen back, it's very obvious that you've done this. The end, till the end, till the end, till the end, till the end. Okay, so using the draw tool, you can come in and just sort it out manually. You're just eyeballing it, making it smoother than it was. I'm not doing this for real here. It's just an offhanded example. Normally I'd spend a lot more time being very careful that it sounds uh, genuine and natural. Uh, for another example of how to use the draw tool in a creative way, uh, I have a, another video on the channel called Messing with Stretching and that uses live drawing adjustments of the waveform when combined with uh, the time stretching techniques that were introduced in Renoise 3.2 and that can be worth checking out if you're interested.